The debate has raged online about the most dominant and competitive league in Europe for some time now. Premier League fans love to throw the Farmers League moniker around to show the perceived superiority of their league over its continental counterparts. But as we will see, the Premier League is one of the least competitive leagues out there, if we are to look at the number and caliber of winners since 2000. As for me at least, competitiveness can be measured by the possibility of any club in a certain league to become champions. So let's take a look at some of the clubs that have shocked the establishment by crowning themselves champions. We will start with the richest and best known league out there. The English game had arguably three periods of outright dominance by one club with these being Liverpool from 1972 to 1990, Manchester United from 1992 to 2013, and most recently Manchester City. However, in 2016, one of the best footballing stories that I have ever witnessed unfolded in the Premier League. Since this story is widely known, I will try to be terse. After having narrowly escaped relegation the season before, manager Nigel Pearson was sacked along with players that took part in a racist sex tape in Thailand, sparking a PR disaster. With a shoestring budget, Claudio Ranieri at the helm, Vardy up front and N'Golo Kante sweeping up every ball in midfield, they rocked the world with their title win. Bookies nearly went bankrupt, paying out exorbitant sums to a few lucky punters that took a shot on the team's 5000 to 1 odds, and football would never be the same again. Actually, it's pretty much the same, the big clubs doing big club things and the money and corruption permeating every aspect of the game. And now with that depressing statement, we move on to Germany the most serious country in the world. We all know Bayern win everything over there, but what many people have forgotten is that the original Bundesliga dynasty was established by Borussia Mönchengladbach, who dominated most of the 70s, despite facing a Bayern that won three European Cups on the bounce. Since 2000, a lot has changed in German football, most notably a complete overhaul and rebuild that began in the early 2000s that saw them ultimately win the 2014 World Cup. In the years since, Bayern have won 11 consecutive titles, with only 4 other teams lifting the famous oversized saucer. 3 championships have gone to Borussia Dortmund, the last two most famously under Jurgen Klopp. Since they are a massive club and European Cup winners, we will focus on the other three. The first one is Werder Bremen, who in 2003-04 pipped Bayern to the title. In a squad directed by Thomas Schaaf, top scorer Ailton bagged 28 goals, and Werder's attacking prowess ensured that they won most games that season. Three years later, VfB Stuttgart looked to capitalize on Bayern's weakness and produce a surprise. As it turned out, Schalke and Werder also had the same idea, the season ending with two points between the top three sides. The VfB side coached by Armin Fee contained future superstars Sami Khedira and Mario Gomez. The horrible season sent shockwaves through Bayern's hierarchy, eight players came in and nine left. Amongst the arrivals were Frank Ribéry, Miroslav Klose and the superb Luca Toni. The overhaul helped them claim the title back to the next season. But one season after that, Oliver Kahn and Ottmar Hitzfeld left the club. With no established goalkeeper and Iran-hater Jürgen Klinsmann at the helm, Bayern were hopeless. VfL Wolfsburg hired Maverick, Felix Magath and had two absolute machine guns in their attack, with Edin Zeko and Grafic scoring 26 and 28 goals respectively. The absolutely obscene amount of goals meant that they could humiliate Bayern 5-1 and string together a streak of 10 consecutive wins. Since then, only Klopp's brilliance has managed to topple the Bavarians and even when they miss out on a trophy, they seem to come back stronger and stronger. Italy might have the most amount of clubs that claim to have dominated the league over the years. From the inception of the league, the likes of Genoa, Bologna, Provercelli, Juve, Inter, Torino and AC Milan have produced sides that steamrolled their opponents and made the competition their own. The capital clubs provide two glaring omissions from this list, Lazio and Roma, who like the teams from London and Berlin, do not have the overflowing trophy cabinets of their provincial rivals. At the turn of the millennium, the 99-2000 and the 2000-2001 trophies went to Rome. Lazio were the first ones to break the dominance of the northern teams, with Pavel Nedved and Alessandro Nesta providing security and class in Sven Goran Eriksson's side. Not to be outdone by their oh so bitter rivals, Roma responded next season, with top scorer Batistuta up front in Fabio Capello's system. Of course, partnering him in attack, there could only be one candidate, and I'm going to let you guess who it is. The fortunes of the Rome clubs have sadly not picked up since then despite coming close on numerous occasions. To be added to this list is Napoli who have just won the title last year in emphatic fashion. 
When it comes to breaking streaks, no one does it like the French, whether we are talking about football or ending lines of guys called Louis. After David Trezeguet fired Monaco to the league title as the world was preparing for Y2K, one year later Nantes took the title without any superstar names in their side. The club had an accomplished academy, regularly losing their best players to bigger sides, but in 2001 the years of hard work paid off, when they saw off Lyon's challenge to claim their 8th title. Lyon would have the last laugh however, as they won the next 7 titles. The subsequent 4 years after that can be described as a veritable interregnum, with 4 different winners before PSG won the first of their most recent titles. Laurent Blanc's Bordeaux side broke Lyon's run by winning their last 11 games of the 2008-09 season. One bright spark in their side was Johan Gourcuff, who I thought would become an absolute superstar, but his career was sadly cruelly influenced by recurring injuries. Didier Deschamps, who succeeded Blanc as national team manager in 2012, also succeeded him as league winner. At the helm of Marseille, he proved his quality a long time before people were slandering him online for not winning the World Cup. Lille followed Marseille as Ligue 1 winners, with the side containing some truly vintage names. Rudy Garcia could rely on the brilliance of Eden Hazard, alongside players like top scorer Moussa so, defensive stalwart Adil Rami, and boldness denier Gervinho. Long before football hipsters were buying Leicester shirts by the crate, Montpellier provided a huge surprise by winning the 2011-12 title. The team with no previous championship wins stunned the country after holding their own against the established sides and the nouveau riche PSG. Their top scorer and star man was of course none other than serial winner of the unofficial hottest in the Premier League award Olivier Giroud. Since then, PSG have won every league title with two notable interruptions. The first was provided by Monaco with Mbappé and Falcao up front. The second one was arguably even more impressive with PSG being led by Mauricio Pochettino and boasting Mbappe and Neymar in their ranks, the clever scouting and shrewd transfer policy of Lille enabled them to claim the league title 10 years after they won their last. With PSG shifting their approach from superstars who won't track back to extracting maximum value out of their academy, now feels like the best time for another upset and my money is on Ren. The Spanish top flight is well and truly a diopoli. With Barcelona's La Masia regularly producing world-class players, and Real Madrid buying up every superstar they can lay their hands on. Sometimes though, a combination of bad transfers, financial mismanagement and muddled leadership leaves the door open to the chasing pack. In the 1999-2000 season, Deportivo La Coruña's rendition of Harry Redknapp's QPR stole the crown from the big two before later descending into bankrupt. Their top scorer was none other than Roy Mackay. Valencia followed this with two wins in 2001-02 and 2003-04, and two lost Champions League finals. These iterations of the Valencia team had some truly astounding players in their ranks, most prominently Didier Deschamps, and were led by a certain fat Spanish waiter. Since then, only the leg-breaking teams of Diego Simeone have managed to wrestle control from the two age-old enemies. With the big teams becoming increasingly dominated across Europe's top five leagues, it is harder and harder to quantify which league is the most competitive. So I'd like to put it to you in the comments and let me know your opinions. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time.